maybe you think there's this is worthy of recording. So Todd reminded me to record this. So it's the thing where we're weaker when one person doesn't do their job, doesn't do what they're supposed to do. We're weaker as an organization. But Alex, I'm just like in my own little world and you know, how can what I do affect other people? Well, I'll tell you what, man, it's kind of like, you ever hear the butterfly effect? So think about this, just in your own personal life. What, think about what decision, a momentary decision that changed the course of your life, like totally changed the course of your life. Like had not that thing happened, it's, it's so do you guys understand the butterfly effect? Like here's a, it's, it tends to be used like you do something and affects someone half a world away because you did this, it affected that person totally unrelated, okay? That's one version of the butterfly effect. The other version of the butterfly effect, just think about your life. For example, think about when you met your spouse. Um, you happen to be at the same place at the same time, maybe. Um, you entered the, the party and she was just right there, you know, and you, were, and you could have missed the party. All of a sudden something opened up, it's like, well, I can go now. And you go there and you met your spouse. That is what I'm talking about. Or those weird things where if you were on time, you would have been killed, right? Like thinking about the people that were late getting to the Twin Towers, they had a meeting and they got held up because their kid was sick and they had to pick them up at school, they had to come back home and they're trying to make it to a meeting in the Twin Towers, they got stuck in traffic and then boom, the planes crashed into the Twin Towers. They were supposed to be in that meeting, but they weren't and their lives were spared. Or how about those people that did everything they could to get in the Twin Towers that day because they needed to get an air, they needed to do an errand. And so it's like, well, I got some time, I'm gonna go in. And had they made a different decision and, and, and procrastinated that decision, but they're dead as a result. I know, kind of morbid. I was okay. supposed to, I was supposed to fly into LaGuardia that morning, and oh. uh, I got diverted. I'm, they canceled my flight, and I got on the next flight, and I would have flown right over the towers at that about that same within ten minutes. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. And I ended up ended up going to Pittsburgh and spending three days in Pittsburgh. Yeah, well, think about been, the people on yeah. uh, on the flight. Yeah. The guy that changed his ticket to get on that flight because he could leave, wanted to get to his destination sooner. Or the person that missed the flight, like the one in Pennsylvania that went down, or the one by the, yeah, the Pennsylvania, was it Pennsylvania yeah. that went down? Yeah, Saints, or Saints, Tanksville or Saints. Yeah, the person that missed that flight I mean, I don't know the specific stories, but there's got to be, I know that there's stories like that. And I, I, we landed in Pittsburgh and there was a bomb threat at the Pittsburgh airport also. Really? Yeah. There was, there was 40, 47 planes on the runway at that time because wow, everybody had to be out of the air. Yeah. That's crazy. So you, you kind of wonder what put you, what has put you in a position? Um, and, and you know, you just gotta think it's a God thing, um, how you were protected. There, there are things for me that um, like, wow, you know, if I had done this, made this move, would have been devastating, but I didn't, you know? So what does that have to do with the builder's call? Well, it has everything to do with it. It has everything to do with your business. If you really serious are, are taking on the mantle of wanting to build a business, then you have to do everything that it takes to build the business. I, talk, I talked about this on our Tuesday call. Man, if, you, if, if it costs $2 to get that Coke out of the machine, you're not getting nothing if you don't pay your $2 got to pay the full price. Building this business is no different. It's no different. You got to pay the full price. 
if you want to build a proper business that that you need that you want duplicated right because you got to be a copy worth duplicating okay in mindset attitude because if you're trying to create a long-term business you need to create long-term people that do the right thing okay so um so again getting back to the idea that you've got to do what you got to do in order to be the type of person that can build a long-term business so what what are those things what are those things that you need to do that i don't think you can compromise on okay i really don't think you can compromise on it you know i assume that you know all the value of why you want to build a business why it makes sense you know why does it make sense oh come on don't do this again there focus we got focus <laughs> that happens to some of us sometimes right we lose focus okay so it's kind of like this you've got mcdonald's okay the ultimate franchise the mcdonald's franchise and when you walk in to mcdonald's what are the elements that are consistent among them right that you know it's going to be the same right the food the food is the same the menu items may differ from market to market like the mcrib I love the McRib sandwich, baby. Every time they have the McRib, <coughs> I'm all over it. But the McRib isn't at all locations. But when you get a Big Mac at one McDonald's, you're going to get Big Mac at another, right? The food is consistent, right? You know, service may vary, but they all wear the uniform, right? The bathrooms, some are cleaner than others, but they all have just this maybe fairly consistent quality in the environment, you know, the facilities, right? Service, facilities, facilities, all right? The training is standardized, right? From the franchise owner all the way to each of the trainees. Like you can go from one McDonald's to another and you just pick up the same thing, whatever you're doing, right? So the training is consistent. The food supply is they, they have the same commissary that all the foods produced from, okay? And, and so every McDonald's will produce money to McDonald's Corporation, right? And then that money goes back to the franchise owner in the form of royalties. So they get they get paid. And the reason why this business model works is because everything is done properly so that, so that the, the formula does not vary. And then all you do is duplicate it all over the country at every truck stop exit and you know, every major suburban location or, or um, you know, where people congregate for buying stuff, you'll find a McDonald's and by the way, McDonald's, their, their biggest revenue generator is real estate. That's really kind of their, you know, people don't know about is they make more money in real estate than they do in, you know, because the owners have to lease the land and they own the land. So, okay, so if you want to own a McDonald's, you want to make the money as a franchise owner, you can't vary the formula. Because the, the program doesn't work. And the McDonald's Corporation, they can't vary the formula because then duplication doesn't happen. The only variation is market related based on food. Like, does the McRib move better in these particular communi communities as opposed to another community? You know what I mean? So, so it's, it's very basic stuff, but it, this is the key. This is the foundational principle of any franchise is the ability to duplicate what is working and duplicating success, right? So, um, so what is it in the alliance? What are the fundamental things that you have to be concerned about if you want to build a long-term business? If you believe that this model will work for you, and I don't know why you wouldn't, because there have been successful builders that have long-term businesses 
that are producing income like mine. Like all the top managers are producing income. Okay. So this is where you got to put on the Alliance hat, you know, it's kind of like, you know, make the Alliance great again. <laughs> it's another kind of mega make the Alliance great again. You got to put on the M the MAGA hat, make Alliance great again hat and be the player that does all the things you're supposed to do so the team wins. Yeah, I know it's your business, but you know what? If this McDonald's owner decides to create, you know, the big Alex, he varies the formula and it messes it up for the other McDonald's down the road because they don't have a big Alex. Maybe the big Alex is terrible. And then people go to McDonald's like, oh man, big Alex, this is a terrible thing right? It, it is a perturbation. Here's actually how you know this. Have you ever gone to a Dairy Queen, like a, a, a soft serve ice cream stand that used to be a Dairy Queen? You know, the franchise owner decided not to continue the franchise. They sold the facility to another owner who changed it to, you know, Dairy King, okay? And when you look at these, and I know you go to small towns and you see it all over the place, you know, soft serve, whippy dip. And it's all the same machinery to make soft serve ice cream, but it's different. It's like you're in a different universe because you know it's different. It's not Dairy Queen anymore. And you go in there and it's definitely not Dairy Queen. And the food might be similar, might even be better. I don't know. But you know you're not going into a Dairy Queen. But because it's that's a different name. It looked the same as the Dairy Queen. How many of you have all seen that in small towns where you have this franchise that used to be a Dairy Queen, now they change it to another name, right? It is odd, isn't it? It is like, this is weird universe. You know what I mean? So if you want to build an Alliance business, you've got to do what Alliance builders do to create something that's tight. So that when you hire someone in a different part of the country, they're hearing the same thing that Andy Albright's saying. They're hearing the same thing from you. They're, they're hearing the same ideas, right? And there's, now every team has its own character. It's like NFL. All the franchises have their own character, but they all play football the same. The rules are the same. The franchise system varies by team, but the overall product is a franchise that plays NFL football, and then they abide by the rules in terms of conduct, right? Especially, particularly in the COVID protocols that they got to follow. That's why Denver played without a quarterback, because <laughs> they had to follow the contact tracing protocols. All those quarterbacks in the quarterback room got exposed, so they, they weren't allowed to play. The whole NFL, and you can say that some of that's arbitrary and capricious too, because it kind of is. But bottom line is they all operate this, under the same rules and guidelines, but they have their own character. Okay, so our group has its own character. The Fitz group has his own character, etc. Right? But we all play by the same rules. We all do the same things. We all endorse all the calls that you need to be on. Okay. But kind of the flavor of the team is different because of the leader and, you know, some of the systems they put in place. But the Alliance system is always going to be there, right? Okay, so having said that, what are the things? What is the food? What is the facilities? What is the training that needs to be duplicatable? Well, what needs to be duplicatable, number one, is you, the franchise owner. The franchise owner has to ascend to the the moral and ethical guidelines that exist in the alliance as well as all the other things like the work ethic and the and the system right you can't vary it you vary it your team is doomed to die because what you introduce by varying the formula is cancer and the cancer in your organization will spread and your organization will flounder and never grow right is this making sense? 
And you can't expect to say, well, I'll just do it like this. And then, uh, you know, I'll build my business, you know, it's like, oh, come on, man. Like, let's have some emotional maturity to understand what top performing organizations are doing, right? What top performing organizations are doing. Let's understand that first. I mean, how dare you think you could build an organization different than the way it's been done? Why be the maverick? Like, why be the maverick McDonald's owner thinking that you can overcome, what is it, 2 billion served? Is that the latest number, 2 billion? It's some crazy number. You had an aunt on that second plane. See, there you go. Butterfly effect. She had no clue. No clue. So I'm telling you stuff now and explaining to you stuff now where you will have a clue. So you run into disaster when you're trying to build a team. You got 30 people on your team. All of a sudden, because you're doing something deficient, they're going to duplicate that. And then your business crumbles and nothing's going to be there because of your efforts. I think part of the learning curve in building a business is learning the mistakes, learning from your mistakes, why people quit you and why, why it's not thriving, why it's not growing. There's a lot of strategy stuff that you got to do, but I, I'm starting with you, the franchise owner, you, the business owner, because you got to do some fundamental things, right? To make sure that you are doing all the right things. It's kind of like Sir Lancelot with King Arthur, right? Sir Lancelot had to remain pure. Purity was his strength. Purity is why he kicked everybody's butt. But until he had an affair with Guinevere, I think, his strength dissipated. Or Samson when he cut his hair. So wouldn't you rather take care of all those little foibles early than you know, sooner than later, right? Wouldn't you rather accelerate the growth of your business by making sure you do all the right things, okay? So some fundamental things that you got to get your, wrap your head around, right? That, you know, this is being a system, this is a team player, you know, this is being part of this system, okay? Being part of the alliance building system, there are things that you have to um, submit to I don't know how you can build a business without submitting to these things. These things are mega important, right? So the, here, one of the first things, I'm, there's, this is not gonna be in any order, okay, per se. But I think the fundamental concepts of the eight, eight steps to success, those things are fundamental because if you want a growing and thriving organization, they need to be cognizant of doing all the things that Andy Albright teaches in the eight steps to success, right? They gotta be a personal user. They gotta buy life insurance on themselves. Number two, they gotta have a work ethic. If you don't work, you don't eat. You have to work, okay? You gotta produce insurance. I don't know how you can legitimately build this business if you're not on the leaderboard. You have no credibility and all you're doing really, here's the mentality of it. This is why it's not congruent. Your mindset is because when you hire somebody, you're hiring somebody to do what you are unwilling to do. And that causes incongruity in your integrity. And if you're a person of any kind of integrity, how can you expect someone to do that you're not willing to do? How can you expect your team to dial the phone when you're not dialing the phone? How can you expect your team to order leads and sell insurance when you're not ordering leads and selling insurance? It is insane for you to think, well, I'm just gonna be a builder and I'm not gonna, oh my gosh, dude, I am bypassing you, I'm building depth underneath you and I can give a crap on what happens to you because you are totally not, you know, building your team properly, right? So I think that's fundamental work. You gotta be a good listener, you gotta listen, you gotta read. What book are you reading, right? You gotta attend all meetings. You gotta be on all the meetings we do, all the Alliance meetings, because you gotta know what the language is. You gotta talk the talk. 
You got to walk the walk. You got to be a walking, talking alliance machine. You got to be teachable. You got to be accountable. You got to communicate with a positive mental attitude. Do you see how all these things are creates the person that you will become? This will help you grow to the leader you need to be. But if you have, all, can you imagine having all your team people doing this, being part of the eight steps of success? Because they're producing, they're building, okay? Eight steps of success. The fundamental baseline, okay? And I'm gonna pull some things out that I, I just really believe in. Got to sell insurance, create some credibility, right? Well, Alex, Andy Albright never sold much. That's true. So here's the thing. If you don't want to sell, then you've got to be a major influencer of people. You got to be a major motivator of people. So show me that you can move people to sell insurance when you are unwilling to. Show me your motivation skills. The easier way to do it is freaking sell insurance. Sorry, my substitute swear word again. I gotta be careful of doing that. Okay, how can you build a system without being without recruiting? You got to show this to people. When you're building an agency, you gotta hire people. You got to bring people in. I don't want to use that word hire anymore, really, because it makes it sound like you're hiring job oriented people, which we are, but we're also wanting to hire people who want to build a business too. Do you, know, do you think um, franchise owners want to get into McDonald's just so they can fry the fryer? I love being a, fry, a fry, French fry fryer. I'm buying a McDonald's so I can be a French fry fryer for the rest of my life. No, man. A McDonald's owner buys the franchise because he wants to get more freedom in his life. He wants to stop trading hours for dollars and he wants to create that income that keeps going on when he has a whole, and typically they try to buy multiple McDonald's, multiple franchises. So they're, they're not having to go in and run in it. They don't got to run it. They got people to run it. They just get the money coming in, man. They invested a whole bunch of money and then they're getting the return on investment. Okay, here's the thing on the recruiting. The, every week you don't show the plan to a new person is another three weeks at your job of selling insurance or three weeks at, at, at your full-time job and your part-time job is selling insurance. That It's a fundamental principle that if you're gonna build a business, you gotta build the business. You gotta be consistent every week of showing this opportunity to new people every week, every week, every week. How, I don't know how you can build a viable business without going all in on this, okay? Um, and I'm figuring out how to do my Facebook recruiting, how to give you guys the opportunity to get on it. So I'm working things out. I know I've said, a, I've been so swamped with other things on my mind that I got to get done, but that I'm going to get done. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to tap into that. Okay. Cause I've been finding some really good people. Okay. But you got to be willing to recruit. Here's another one. You got to get your language, right? You got to talk the right stuff, okay? Not only positive, right? Positive and encouraging people that they can do it, but also you gotta get the lingo down. You know, the eight steps to success. And the way you get it is by attending all the meetings because you hear how people are talking, you need to duplicate the language. Just like what, you know, what Todd was talking about or someone was talking about, you know, acronyms in the military. You know how many acronyms. And then, you know, the whole, you know, Law enforcement has their own codes, you know, 10-4 <laughs> and whatever, you know, 10-20. You know, I, I bet you Todd could tell me all the, you know, what's um, 
a bankruptcy that's, uh, you know, happening right now. It's what, 1014 or I don't know what it is. It's what you hear on TV, you know, um, robbery in progress. That's the 10 number, right, Todd? Okay. So, and it informs in a very short code to approach with caution because they're bankruptcy, robbery in progress, or robbery in progress. It, it informs what you do, okay? The language too, common language. The common language in any organization is what unifies an organization. You have no idea how unifying language can be with an organization using the same words. You know, the eight steps to success. You know, we called it the eight team player steps. You know, when we said 18 player steps, it sounded like 18. <laughs> and so we try to go away from eight team player steps to eight steps to success, okay? We talk about a team player, a team player does the eight steps, okay? In the Amway business, we had unifying language. That's how you can tell people were, you know. So now the word is, um, are you on your way to partner? Partner, 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 okay? Manager, agency manager, let's hit agency manager. What does that look like? What does that sound like? You know, you all should be able to draw that out. What is an agency managership? I say, you know, Supreme, what does an agency managership look like? And immediately in your mind, you, you should be able to, or you draw it out. Looks like this, Alex. Four legs. This one doing 25, 15, 7.51, and then my volume can be distributed in any of the legs that need it, okay? And total volume is 50,000 a month, issue paid times two months. That's agency manager. So when I say draw out agency manager, you should just like whittle that off like it's nothing, okay? Do you see how the common language helps unify an organization and helps get your mind right and then helps your downline think the same way because language informs how you think, right? Language is tremendous in informing how you think because it shows how you think. And we all want to duplicate the same thought process that Andy Albright is trying to instill in each of us, right? And he has his own way of doing it, but the message is still the same. What are we trying to accomplish? We're trying to accomplish duplication. We're trying to accomplish volume, creating volume, creating volume. Volume is selling insurance. Volume comes from selling insurance, okay? Now notice, these are all do things that you can do. The results come later and the results come when you're working, but you cannot, don't get me wrong, don't think about, well, I gotta wait until I can you know, do all these things. No, it's a work in progress, man. Cut yourself some slack. It's a total work in progress. You are on your way, you know, the 18 player steps, man, I'd rather have someone that does, you know, 25% of all eight than someone that does 100% of seven and does 0% of one. Does that make sense? I'd rather have someone who does 25% of all eight than 100% of seven and, do, and leaves one step out, does zero. Does that make sense? By the way, I'm talking to me, okay? I'm talking to me, okay? I'm not just talking to you, I'm reminding myself that these are the type of people that we're trying to develop to become future leaders in the organization. Okay, future leaders. You ever wonder like how future leaders in the Republican Party, future leaders in the Democrat Party, they're all groomed, right? They're all groomed for the basic local election. Those guys are looking for their next big leader who has typically appeal across the diversity of people. They look for people that, has, that have charisma, right? And then they develop them all the way up the line so they can control them when they're in power. That's kind of how the game is played. They're looking for people to develop, okay? I'm looking for people to develop. Andy Albright's looking for leaders to develop 
But if they're not doing these fundamental things, then how can we help them? Here's a fifth one. Man, communication is the lubrication of all financial, all financial uh, matters. Communication is real key because you need to be constantly reminded, constantly guided, constantly, I don't know, in touch with somebody who's trying to help you, right? It's kind of like fertilizer, okay? You need to be fertilized. You need to be watered. Like if you stop watering a plant for a week, what's going to happen to the plant? Communication is the same thing. When you don't talk to me, when I don't talk to Andy Albright, when you don't communicate with your upline, your growing upline, the one who's on track, right? Alex, how do you know they're on track? They do all these things, okay? The communication is key, okay? Now, this is my failing is that when I reach out, I don't want to be your boss, right? I don't want to be your boss. So I have trouble calling people because it makes me feel like I'm your boss and I need to stop that. I need to check in on you and, see, and find out how you're doing, okay? You need to communicate early, often. The ones who communicate with me all the time are the ones that are growing, okay? So communication is super key. By the way, this there, there's not a lot here in terms of there's not 50 steps, okay? There's just some key things, but each one can be a whole hour seminar, like how to become an eight steps person, right? Selling insurance. <laughs> Leads, phone script, booking appointments, closing, e-apps, okay, recruiting, sourcing candidates, doing the interview, fast tracking them, get them into class, getting them contracted, right? And getting lists from them so we can build, get the building of depth going, right? Language comes from hanging around the people that are talking the talk and walking the walk. You know, communication is, I just talked about communication. These are just, they're all inherent in becoming a person worth duplicating, okay? So how do I know that I've got someone who's, what are the characteristics of someone who's duplicating Okay, so this is another way to look at someone, another way that I need to evaluate whether or not I spent time with someone. Okay, so how do I, how do I know they're on track? Number one, they listen, they're a listener. When I say, man, you need to um, plug into this boot camp down in Lakeland, for, Florida on the 9th, and or you need to go plug into the Louisville boot camp on the 15th, they do it. They, they get in their car and they drive out there to do it. They plug into a Zoom boot camp, which we probably need to do more of. You know, people think boot camps are nuts and bolts. Yeah, it's part of it. It, it should be like 20%, 25% nuts and bolts and 75% mindset and attitude, man. Because you don't get the mindset and attitude right, then nothing that we teach you on nuts and bolts is going to make a hill of beans. So we fake people out with boot camps because you tell them, well, you're going to learn how to do a phone script. You're going to hear from the top producers in the country. And you go there to learn that, but then what you're going to get, 80%, you know, 75% is the mindset attitude that you need to have in order to become successful with us. Because really, the mechanics are only 25%. It's the mindset actually that'll get you over the finish line. That is the bulk of what we do. And people don't believe that, so we just fake you out. <laughs> okay, so how we know you're on track is you listen and then you work. Okay, you're listening, you're working. You're getting leads, you're pounding the bonus leads, you're getting you're going down the learning curve, okay? So you're a great listener, you put the work in, and then you start getting results. 
okay? You start getting real results from your work, whether it's recruiting, it's recruiting and selling, you're getting results. You're bringing people into business and you're making sales. You're getting results, right? You're starting to get results, okay? Number four, you start getting edification. You start getting rewarded by edification for your results, all right? But the edification doesn't go to your head. You start using the edification to shine the light on others, okay? And then you still listen to your growing up line. You continue to listen to your growing up line. Because you, you don't got such a big head that your upline can't teach you something, right? You still listen. You don't get the big head because you got the edification. And then the fifth one is handle all negative on your own. This is the key that will separate you from the wannabes to the leaders. Handling negative on your own. Like when you get agents that get a big charge back, okay, how you learn to handle it on your own is you counsel with your growing up line or myself, Alex, I had this guy major major charge back. He didn't see it coming. He's really negative right now. Man, how do I encourage them? How do I help them? Great. Let me let me teach you how to do that. And I'll teach you how to do it. I might call him up with you on the phone. You hear me do it. That is a skill teaching someone to keep their minds right when they're going through crap, right? And then next time you run into someone in that same situation, you handle it, not me. You handle it on your own, right? Or you have a major hit in what you're doing and, and you're trying to keep your mind right. You call me and I help you keep your mind right. And I tell you, I'll tell you stuff I'm like, stop thinking about it, dude. The more you think about it, the more it's gonna happen, okay? I will tell you that. The more you focus on the bad thing that's gonna to happen to you, the more it's going to happen. It's like when, it's, it's a psychological problem. It's a psychological trick that you play on yourself. It's kind of like when you tell someone, don't touch that hot stove. Don't touch that hot stove. Tell your kid, don't touch that hot stove. See, the problem is they process the don't part after they hear, touch the hot stove. And they want to touch it. Now it's all they can do to touch it. No, don't. Now they want to touch it. Don't touch the hot stove. Oh, they're crying. It's like, look, I told you not to touch the hot stove. Okay. The more you focus on the negative thing in your life, you're worried about money, you're worried about how am I going to make the bills, the more you focus on that, the more you're going to paralyze yourself to get, continue having that result instead of thinking about something else that is a positive thing that will get you more of what you need. Like focusing on dialing the phone. Amidst all the financial pressure, focusing on dialing the next person, dialing the next person dialing the next person, right? And having the anticipation, this is gonna be the next one, man, this is gonna be it. This person needs to take care of their families. And then you run in, they're yelling at you, you hang up, okay, it's the next one. I know it's the next one's coming, man, next one's coming. You see, now when you can handle that on your own, instead of coming to me, and then you can teach others how to handle it on their own, do you see how this works? This to me is ultimately the leader and what this kind of involves here, this number five, it's another way of saying leaders do what needs 
to be done without asking someone. Okay, now this, this goes beyond counseling and game planning and strategizing how your business is growing, the width and depth and who do I need to work with and you know, getting your upline's perspective on your business, okay? But ultimately, you know what you need to do and it's typically related to all this right here. You know, <laughs> like if I asked you, and it's kind of this question, this question is the ultimate question. If you were your own coach, what would you say to yourself? Or say it another way, if a downline came to you with what you're coming to me, what would you tell your downline agent? And chances are inherently, you're probably gonna know the right thing to say. The problem is you just don't wanna hear it, right? To me, that's kind of the ultimate. Now, there's actually, if you don't know what to do, well, then that's what you need to learn, okay? But beyond that, you know, like, and, and the symptom is negativity in your mindset. That's how you know. If you've got negativity in your mindset, there's something here. Like when you're thinking, this is not working for me. How come it's working for everyone else, but it's not working for me? Chances are you can answer that question by doing a self-evaluation. Am I doing all the 18 player steps? And, I, and here's the one that I know that I'll, I'll probably call you out on it, call me out on it. You're not reading enough books or you're not reading enough of the right books that you need now versus the how-to books. Like Think and Grow Rich. Man, if you haven't read that book, you need to read it. If you have read it 30 years ago, you need to read it now, today, okay? Seriously, like I'm not kidding. You need to get your mind right. You know, the power of positive thinking, Norman Vincent Peale. There are things that you're not doing here that, that's not keeping your mind right. You know, I don't know how you can question the Alliance. Well, you know, the, the Alliance opportunity is limiting. <laughs> okay, tell me, how, how is it limiting you from building the business? Tell me, we just added 22% more income across the board starting last, was it last Wednesday? 22%, someone just told me that they got a policy issued and I was wondering why it took so long to get that policy issued. And then I realized, hey, it's great that it took this long because now you get paid 22% more commission on that policy and 22% more on renewals if it's a permanent policy. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Right? 22% goes on everything. 22% everywhere. Okay? It, and you know what? Um, well, Harriet, just email me and I'll, I'll send you the link. But um, yeah, the 22% the is across the board. Remember, um, Forster's Strong Foundation was only paying out of the annual premium, the commissional premium used to be like 81% of the commissional premium was being paid out. So you would take your, let's say you're at 85%, you would take 85% of 81% of the annual premium, and that would be your commission. Well, so now that 81% is 100%. So you take the AP times 100% times your commission rate, and that's, you know, so your advance is on that too, because you get 75% advance, the advance goes up, doesn't it? It's all percentages. That's why it can be done across the board. If you did a permanent policy, you know, all your renewals go up 22%, okay? Does that make sense? Right? And then we pay, oh my gosh, we pay seven generations in an organization. So this is your group, okay? You, in most other organizations, you get paid the differential between your first level person. So I'm gonna pay 
first level person, this is your override percentage, okay? That's how most organizations operate. So if you're at 85, this person's at 80, you make 5% override. But then when this person makes 85 on their own, you're not limiting them because it's not an illegal pyramid, then your override percentage goes away. But what we do in the Alliance is when this person matches your 85, you get an 8% glow bonus on them. And if they go to 120, you still get an 8% glow bonus on them. And if that person brings in, somebody goes 85, then you get 5%. Another 85, you're gonna get 4%. So we pay down to three, seven generations down. So eight, five, four, two, two, one, added one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you get paid for people at 85 and above all the way down the line in your organization, as opposed to you only getting paid this differential. Do you see the, do you see the difference? In most other organizations, they, you only do this. And then when this person, this first level person matches your commission rate, you lose all your overrides. But we pay down to seven generations. So, so tell me how this is limiting. Okay, again, the reason why you're having those negative thoughts is that you don't understand the system, you're building it improperly because you don't understand it. You're trying to play checkers when this game is chess. Okay, or you are not reading, you're not associating, you're not keep getting your mind right. There's something you're not doing here that it's causing you to have a negative mindset and attitude, right? Leaders do what needs to be done without asking someone. And they learn to handle negative on their own. When they get edified, they use edification to shine the light of other people in their organization. They're quick to give edification to their upline who's helping them grow. They're getting results from their work and they're listening, 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 listening to the people that are trying to help them. They have fruit on the tree. That makes sense? <laughs> Todd, does that make sense on the advance? How the advance works? It's still 75% of the, the number. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's just the percentage goes up. So yeah, I understand. Yeah. The amount of money in the pool of what you get paid on just got bigger. So then you take your pieces out of it, your 75% advance, and then your as earned, and then your renewal income. Okay. That's why I, some people go, well, does that mean I got a 22% raise on my commission rate? It's like, no, it doesn't work like that. It works better than that. It works better because, you know, for all the reasons I mentioned. Okay, so I want to make sure you understand this because everything else from here is all monkey stuff, man. This is the most important part to me of building the business is getting your mind right and being a system player to be a product of the system because you are doing all the right things. And you know what? It's a simple thing to do all the right things. It doesn't, it's not hard. You just have to do it. And when you can do it, you can teach it, you can be the example for it, right? And then everything else is strategy, right? Because all the strategy stuff is you got to build with, right? The reason to build with is profitability because of that override percentage or glow, okay? That's profitability, but stability is the first person or however you can start building lists is you got to get a leg four deep. That's your first thing because out of four deep, you're going to find one person that understands it and gets it. Just like in with one, two, three, four, you're going to find someone who gets it and these people don't get it. You're going to find another person that gets it. You know, these other people, so it's like one out of four kind of get it. So when you do it in depth, what works in with works in depth. 
So you got to get four deep as fast as you can, right? Because you don't got, well, here's how it really works. You don't got someone sponsored. You don't got someone in the business until you get someone for him. So this person locks that person in. We keep this person in longer because they can, they have a hope and expectation of an override. Okay, so you don't have someone recruited until you have someone for them, right? And then you don't have a leg, okay, until it's four deep. Okay, you gotta get it four deep, and you're gonna find this person, and then you get it 12 deep, and you're gonna have so much momentum because volume bubbles up in depth, right? And when you can get four, when you can get When you can get six legs in width, 12 deep, what you've done is you set up the skeleton for a massive organization, massive, okay? And most agencies have only two legs, right? The next part is getting the next four to get them 12 deep. That's it. You'll be a millionaire if you can do this. Or I should say when you do it, you'll become a millionaire. Like you do it in three legs or maybe four legs, you're gonna be making 500 to 750. But you got six legs rocking easily. You gotta start with leg one, okay? And then you find enough width to start leg two. But depth is the key and depth happens with a list of names. If you're crappy at getting lists from people, man, then you're never gonna be able to do it. That's a skill. It's a skill that can be learned. But it's also finding the right people that see the power of building Okay, you're not gonna get someone who just wants to sell insurance. We love them and we're gonna bring them in. But if they don't see the power of building the business, they're never gonna turn over a list of names of their more market, or they'll never get involved in recruiting, investing in recruiting, you know, the way that we're doing it. Right, this is it, this is, this is it, it's simple. Okay, but it starts from the fun fundamentals of being a system player, being a team player, being part of the system because you are availing yourself of all the things you need to do and keeping your mind right, keeping your attitude right. But you gotta have the hope and expectation that the future lies in your ability to do these simple things. And it really is simple, okay? I mean, when you think about the kind of income we make, I mean, what would you have to do in corporate America to make that kind of income? Number one, you'd have to work long hours. Number two, you gotta do whatever the company tells you to do. Number three, you gotta kiss someone's butt enough so they look at you better than someone else. Sometimes you gotta be the right race. You gotta look good, smell good. You gotta fit the mold of what they're looking for physically. Maybe you gotta be the right gender, the right race and the right gender, coming from the right schools. Okay, you can play that game all you want to. I exited out of that game a long time ago because I didn't meet all those criteria. And I don't wanna play that game. I don't wanna kiss someone's butt. Here, you get paid for what you do, for whoever doeth, okay? You will get payeth, okay? You'll get paid, is what you do. And it's a powerful thing. It is an awesome thing, it's a beautiful thing. But it's your key, okay? I'm not talking about rocket science here. I'm just talking about fundamentals. You can get the fun the, these fundamentals down, dad gum, man, you can, Sorry, that's a substitute swear word. You can make it huge in the business. It's just wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. Good attitude, positive ex expectation, speaking it into existence, wash, rinse, repeat. And when you turn around five years later, you look around and go, wow, look what I was able to do. <laughs> I got these people that are rocking. You know, 10 years later, it's like, geez, thank God I listened. And I start doing all those things Alex talked about 10 years ago. Now I'm making seven figures. You know, it doesn't have to take 10 years. But if it took 10 years, see, because maybe by year five, you're making 300,000, right? You have to have, you got to work with the urgency like it's going to be taken away tomorrow. But you got to have the long-term vision in place to know that everything you're doing today counts towards your future. Likewise, everything you blow off today takes away from the future that you want. 
So that's why in your mind, you have to have that vision totally focused. And again, Think and Grow Rich talks about having that major definite purpose. You got to read that part of major definite purpose. All right. So anyway. Okay. Well, thank you, Todd, for money to record this. Um, I hope this makes sense. This is how we're going to change your direction and where you're going. This is going to change how I change my direction. This is going to change how the whole alliance, and it's always been here. That's the thing. We just have to remind ourselves to take advantage of our advantage. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing. We don't got to develop anything extra. It already is here. It's just time to duplicate it, man. All right. God bless, man. I'm here to help you. Remember that communication thing? Communicate with me. Let's put you on a game plan to get your mind right on this because you will be wealthy. I promise you. I don't care how old you are. This is beyond your current age. What matters is that you're malleable enough to learn something new and that you let go of preconceived notions about yourself, about your limitations, and, and forge ahead with the new you. You can change you, and it's only a decision away, right? It's the act as if. Act as if you're an agency manager. What would an agency manager do? Well, I'll start acting like one, right? All right, rock on, man. God bless everybody. Hope this helped. <laughs> and if you need that uh, power of um, compound recruiting, right, the magic of compound recruiting, just email me and I'll get you the link. <laughs> rock on.